Well, hello and welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me back here for day 225 of 365 days of Bible reading for a new set of seven days. We've got some coffee, we've got some Bible, and we've got you. I'm excited to get into it today. Let's talk what scriptures we're going to be reading. And those are in the descriptions on every platform which we have. I'm doing this with my hand here. I paused there because I forgot what platforms we're on. I shouldn't forget because we're 225 days deep. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. You can tell I'm in some need of some coffee. I don't know when jet lag runs out, by the way, but I'm still quite tired. And I'm like a few days past. Maybe I need to drink more water. Maybe I need to drink more coffee. We'll drink some coffee in the moment. Let's talk scriptures, though. Psalm 95, verse 1 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 36 to chapter 8, verse 13. And Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1 to chapter 9, verse 12. So those are our scriptures that we're reading today. Make sure you get amongst and have a look at those at some point of today. Let's talk coffee, though. And for the last time, we're going to be giving this Miller's Coffee, the espresso roast, a go roast, the espresso roast, a go for today. Now, you remember in the Chemex, it was very light, very sweet, but it missed a, a bunch of that body feel. We've got it in the plunger today, and I wonder if today it's going to taste similar, but obviously a little bit more chunky in the middle. So let's give us a go and see what it tastes like today. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. I wow because it's quite bitter, which is not what I expected, considering there was like no trace of bitterness in that Chemex. Um, with this bitterness, obvi obviously this coffee just has some uh, unforgiveness and uh, some forgiveness that needs to extend to somebody because this thing is bitter, more bitter than anything else I've ever come across. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm not sure this is good as a plunger. As a chem I I'd write it like this. I'd say espresso is number one, then you've got the Chemex, and then you've got it as a plunger. Obviously, an espresso blend is going to be best for the machine. Look, I'd I, I reckon it would be worth giving this a go if you're looking to try something new and want to support a local business. It'd be worth giving these guys a go. You can buy it online. Miller's Coffee is what you're looking for. Uh, but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have this some more over the next few days as an espresso. I have been mucking around with it to try and get the best out of it. I hit some really good ones and then I hit some really bad ones. But it's worth giving it a go if you're looking for a new coffee to give a try. Buy a bag of beans and give it a go. That is it though for the brews today. Let's get into the Bible. The reason that we are here. Worship changes everything. Worship isn't a song. If we're not careful, we condition our mind to believe that worship is a few slow songs for 12 minutes on a Sunday morning. But worship is so much more than that. Worship is a heart attitude. It's a decision to constantly live in a way that we would glorify God in thought, action, and in word. We don't worship because we don't feel like it or because things are going well. We worship often in spite of those factors. We also don't worship based on our feelings or because of what it makes us feel. And if we don't worship for all of those things, the question must arise, well, why do we worship? We worship because God is who he is. And I love these verses right here, verse 3 and then verse 6 to 7. We're going to read it because I love what it stirs within me when it comes to the val validity of why we worship God. It says this, For the Lord is the great God, the King above all gods. Then verse uh, 6 to 7 Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. I love that. Come, let us bow, bef bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. I love that because it reminds us of two things. Number one, it reminds us of, us of our position in relationship to God, but it also reminds us who God is. Now, we must commit as Christians to knowing God not just who God is, but knowing God's ways too. We have to consistently remember who God is and how God operates. This is what's going to fuel the fear of the Lord in our lives so that we can continue to live a life of intentional worship to God. What an interesting verse we find in 1 Corinthians today. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Interesting, isn't it? We're living in a post-COVID world where knowledge and understanding has taken a huge priority over most things. In the church world, this can be a blessing, but it can also be a curse. 
The truth is, we could we could study scripture until Christ returns and still miss so much of what God wants and who God is. There is so much value in studying. At the same time of doing this Bible plan, the, the, the Daily Brew, at the time of recording this, I'm also doing a diploma of theology. Why? Well, first, because God asked me to do it. But second of all, it's helping me go so much deeper in the study of Scripture and my understanding of the church. However, there is some things I can only experience, not through my understanding, but through love. What happens is when our knowledge increases, often it starts to do two things in our lives. Number one, it makes us prideful. We puff up, thinking we're superior because of what we know compared to others. But the second thing is it makes us doubtful. We puff up. We start to doubt the supernatural things because our ideas are puffed up. We can't explain how things happen. And this is the danger in the church right now. We have a lot of quote-unquote smart people who know things. Their heads are puffed up, which means that they're smart. But when their heads are puffed up, their hearts often get choked to death. Now, God didn't come for our heads, did he? He didn't come for our heads to help us understand. We don't accept God into our heads when we accept a relationship and start a relationship with him. We accept him into our hearts. Where does love actually live? I'm not talking about reality, but I'm talking about metaphorically. We always say that love comes and lives in our hearts. That's why love heart. There's a, there's a sense of on Valentine's Day, there are hearts. Obviously not an anatomical heart, but a heart because love lives in our hearts. It's love that builds up. I think we need to be careful not to throw out study and the understanding of Scripture, but we also need to be careful not to allow the puffing up of our minds to choke the love of our hearts. Where there is no love, there is no building, both in the church or in the individual relationship with God. Wisdom is a good thing. Surprise, surprise. A book written by Solomon or about Solomon would highlight wisdom as being a good thing for us. It, the, the, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes says, Wisdom, like an inheritance, is a good thing and benefits those who see the sun. Wisdom from God is a gift that's given to us. We need to ask God for an increase of wisdom in our lives. But here in chapter 7, verse 11, we see it's more than a good thing. It's vital for our lives. The sun, the literal sun, and the exposure to the sun gives us vitamin D. Without vitamin D, we find all sorts of negative side effects in our lives, including a lack of tanning, number one, but also an increase of depression and anxiety. I would like to propose that scripture is suggesting the same thing happens when we do not have wisdom in our lives. We get less tanned. No, no, no. What I'm I'm trying to say is a lack of wisdom in our lives produces the same negative side effects in our lives. We find ourselves feeling more depressed and more anxious because we have a lack of wisdom. A lack of wisdom leads us to making bad decisions in our lives. And when we make bad decisions, we end up feeling depressed and anxious. On the flip side, when we increase in kingdom wisdom, we see a lowering of depression and anxiety. Why? Well, perhaps because our actions are good and the negative side effects of decisions made without wisdom are lowered. So, more evidence that wisdom from God is good. I think so. Verse of the day. Verse of the day today, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 8. It says this, But food does not bring us closer to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. Why do we fast? Like, why do we fast food? Why, why do we do that? Is it to get us closer to God by not eating? Honestly, I think a part of me in my early Christian years thought, yes, that God was somehow pleased with my sacrifice of food. But here we read, that we are no better off by what we do or do not eat in God's eyes. So why do we fast? Discipline. We grow in self-discipline when we fast, and by doing so, we reorder our lives, placing God in His rightful place in our lives. Fasting doesn't please God because we do or do not eat. Fasting reorders our lives and refocuses our heart on God. He's no more pleased with what we eat or do not eat than our kitchen table is of what we eat or do not eat. That is it for The Daily Brew today, day 225 of 365 days of Bible reading done and dusted. Thank you so much for joining me no matter where you are around the world. I'm praying for you as I always do, that God would speak to you and reveal things more to you as you go on this journey. Hey, a massive thank you to everybody on Spotify and Apple Podcasts for already taking a moment and following, rating the podcast, and to you on YouTube for subscribing. A massive thank you for doing that. That is it, though, for today. Make sure you come back for day 226 tomorrow. Hey, if it is the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. I keep saying hey, hey. 
because in case you stop listening in the last few seconds, hey, if it's the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another day of the Daily Brew.